I recently launched a new project called Agency Copilot, and as part of the delivery of that product, I needed to create a simple membership website. Now, not wanting to bloat out a website with a full membership software, I decided to go the lean route and use just a couple simple plugins and a few code snippets to pull the whole thing together. The launch successfully handled over 780 new customers coming through the door without a hitch, and I haven't had one support ticket with anybody having any kind of problems on the website. So in this video, I'm gonna share the key tools and code snippets I use to create a simple, lightweight membership site with Generate Press and Generate Blocks. In order to show and hide content for logged in versus logged out users, I use two simple and free plugins from the WordPress repository. The first one is the block visibility plugin. And this thing has just about earned a spot inside of my starter site because I find myself using it so often. It gives you a variety of different ways to show and hide content. Plus it's simple to use and it's free. So there's nothing not to love. Let me show you exactly how I used it inside this build. When you open up any page or post inside the block editor and select a block on the right hand side, you'll see you now have an option for visibility. If you press the plus button, you can start setting all your visibility controls. It of course has things for browser and device, cookie, time and date. You can set the location for the visitor to hide and show the blocks. There's a lot of different options in here. In this case, a lot of times what I used was user role. So if I check the user role box, I can either choose if somebody is logged in, logged out, or specific user roles. But what makes this even more powerful is using the visibility presets. From here, I can click this button to customize my presets and create predefined sets of rules for different sets of visibility conditions. For example, I might want to set something up to show only to a specific user role when they're logged in. I can combine those different rules here inside a preset and save it and then reuse it throughout the entire site. This means I don't have to reset up the controls for each thing. I just pick from a predefined preset that I've already made. Of course, doing that on individual pages and posts is great, but where this becomes really powerful is when you jump into an element. So here we'll go inside my post content element I've set up, and you can see I have the entire post content set up in here with lots of visibility controls. I've essentially been able to create one element here and show and hide multiple things inside this template. So all logged in users will get to see this block, but all logged out users will see this block. I don't have to create two different things. I don't have to set these up on individual posts or pages. I'm doing this inside the element, which is used as a template and used across all the posts on this website. That means you can have one element and your visibility preset set up to be able to control lots of different situations. In fact, this is not only controlling the logged in and logged out, it's also controlling things for the different user roles or if they're viewing free content that I've put on the site. Block visibility is a super powerful plugin, but unfortunately it's only gonna work when you're selecting blocks. The other thing I needed to control here was items inside my primary navigation menu. To do that, I used another simple plugin that's free inside the WordPress repo. It's called If Menu. Although it doesn't look like this plugin has been updated in a while, in my experience, it works flawlessly. Once you install and activate the plugin, you can just navigate to your appearance menus and open up your primary navigation menu. Now, when you open up any of these dropdowns, you have this new checkbox for enable visibility rules. When you click that, you get the option to show or hide items based on a number of conditions. So we have things like user roles inside of here, if they're logged in or logged out, if they're from specific countries or which page on your site it is. Now this doesn't look like a very huge list of options, but the fact that you can combine these with showing and hiding actually gives you a ton of control. I was able to set up things like hiding the logged in button for logged in users and hiding the buy now button for people who have already purchased this all through this simple and free plugin, which makes the user experience on this site a whole lot better. Now I haven't done a whole lot of membership sites, so I didn't realize that WordPress actually added the logged in class to the body of any page when the user is logged in. And you can actually tap into that to do some creative things. So let me show you how I used it on this site. For example, I'm sharing this proposal list for free, even to logged out users. Now to draw attention to this, I created a pseudo element that adds this free banner to the card. This is really great for people who are logged out and want to view a list for free, but I don't need to show this free banner to people who have already purchased the product and logged in. So here I was able to make use of the logged in class and show and hide this pseudo element based on if this class is present on the body or not. 
So let's take a look at how that looks like inside of the code. Here inside the customizer, you can see I use the body not logged in class to make my declarations for this CSS. Essentially what I've done is said, if the body does not have the class logged hyphen in, then do all of these things. All of these things in this case is creating a pseudo element to create the free banner on the website. What's great about this solution is it's automatically gonna not show to people who are logged in and show to the people who aren't. It's important to understand that this method really only hides or creates styles visually. If someone was to inspect the page or look at the code underneath the hood, they would still be able to find this content. Now, in this case, when I'm just adding a free banner to this proposal card, it's not a big deal if somebody found it. However, I am sharing content on this website that I only want to be for subscribe and paid members. That's where the block visibility or if menu comes in. These actually hide that content from ever loading on the page, not just hiding it visually using CSS. So it's important to remember that if you're hiding content that should never be seen by somebody not logged in, you need to use the more robust methods that are offered in block visibility or if menu or other plugins of that nature. Now, while these solutions took care of handling the access and visibility of these items, I still needed to get customers logged into the website. And to be honest, I don't really love the look of the default WordPress login page. Now, it comes in handy in my use case that everybody using this website and going to the login page are already WordPress users anyways, and they probably wouldn't be bothered by the default WordPress login page, but I do wanna make this product look polished and more high-end, so I thought it was worth the effort to go in and customize the look and feel of the login page. It's not dramatic, but the subtle changes in branding, color, shadows, and softer edges give it a more custom feel. I've included the code I used to achieve this look down in the video description. It's all pretty easy to add and customize to make sure that it matches your branding. As for the experience of logging in, I've always hated that no matter what the user role is, as soon as you log into a WordPress website, it dumps you in the back end. I don't think this is a great experience for subscribers who really don't belong in the back end of the site at all. Again, I'm lucky that everybody using this site is a WordPress power user, so there wasn't too much to worry about, but I really don't need them fiddling around in the back of the website anyways. To solve this, I just added two simple snippets to the website, which are down in the video description below and we'll take a look at next. The first snippet I added, thanks to ChatGPT, was a redirect when customers logged in. This script automatically redirects them to the list page, which was the most appropriate landing spot. The second snippet I added disabled the backend access completely. And even though my customers wouldn't be dumped into the backend when they log in, the admin bar across the top of the website invites them to do it. The second snip solves both of those problems by removing the admin bar for non-administrator user roles and redirects the visitors to the homepage if they try to visit any of the backend URLs. Now for my particular use case, I had two sets of users that I needed to get registered on the website. The first set of users were people that bought during the pre-sale period before this website ever existed. I was gonna have to import those users in. The second set of users were gonna be people that purchased through this website after the product was launched. So I needed to solve both of those problems of getting those users registered. To import all the pre-sale customers, I actually used the WP All Import plugin, which absolutely worked flawlessly. Unfortunately, this is a paid product, but you can get lifetime access to both the import and export options that includes the ability to import users for $299. To carry out the export, I logged into my Thrivecart account and exported all my presale customers as CSV. To import, I uploaded that CSV file to the all import interface, and it walked me through the entire process of mapping all the information like your name, email address, and user role. Conveniently, the WP All Import plugin also gives you the ability to disable all user notifications during this process, which I took advantage of because I was able to get all the users in place while the site was still under development without anyone knowing. Now that took care of all the pre-sale customers, but once I launched this site, I was actually gonna be using a third-party cart system, Thrivecart in my case, and I needed to get those Thrivecart customers registered inside of WordPress. Now, I don't always like to use Zapier, but this seemed like the perfect use case for it. I was able to use a pre-built workflow to add a Thrivecart customer as a WordPress user. If you've used Zapier before, this process was pretty simple. It just required me to map out the checkout details to the user details in WordPress. And if you're gonna have under 100 zaps per month, then you can do it entirely for free. Now, using the process I shared in this video, if you didn't have to import all the customers like I did through WP All Import, 
everything else I shared inside this video was totally free. And honestly, it's really simple to manage too. I was afraid of bloating out my site with a bunch of unnecessary features that I was never gonna use. But the benefit of this solution is it's all really lightweight solutions that make it easy to get all this up and running on your site. Doing a membership site was a lot less intimidating than I thought it was, and I learned a lot of new tricks that I'm sure I'm gonna take into new projects going forward. If you're interested in checking out the final product, you can see this website at copilot.theadminbar.com. If you got anything out of this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up, and if you wanna make sure you catch any future videos, go ahead and hit subscribe, and we'll see you again next week.